How's it going, everyone? In my last video review, I talked about uh, an American Kami SHTF. At the end of the video, I said my next video review is going to be a good one. And here we are. And the reason why I said that is because this is an oddball design. It's a purpose-driven custom folder by maker Warren Thomas. I'm a little biased because Warren Thomas is my favorite custom knife maker. And you'll see some of those other pieces in my knife reviews um, if you care to look. This design has been circulated for a long time, ever since at least uh, the 90s when I bought my first Warren Thomas piece. And yet, it's rarely talked about, and as far as I know, it hasn't been reviewed in video format at all. So this will be a first look for many. The design is his Rhino model. Hold it up in close format. It's a frame lock, which I just said Rhino, right? And yet, can't see it. Well, wait till I open this. I'll give you a static look at it, and you can contemplate why it's called the Rhino. So to me, in the closed format, it looks like a boot. All right? I'm just going to go over the specifications of it. There have been quite a few different iterations of this design or this model, generation to generation, that he's made it. Most of them are done in all titanium. Um, there's a couple that have G10 side scales. Um, there's there's at least some that have um, carbon fiber bonded or the laminate process applied. And so, I mean, it just depends, but most of them are all titanium with nothing fancy because it is a purpose-driven weapon. It is a defensive weapon. Now, speaking of that, and to get into that very briefly here, uh, and speaking on the forums, usual suspects net, Warren said that this is the model that he has sold more of than any of his other models to law enforcement and executive protection personnel. So this is out there. It obviously, there's enough buzzword in that and those circles that these guys like it. So I'll show you some of those elements. First, I want to go over the materials just really quick. All right, this is the entire knife is 6AL4V titanium with the exception of the washers that the blade rides on, which are like a nylatron, nylon material, and the ball detent inside this little hole right here, which is ceramic. All right. I didn't give you guys a look at the uh, alien skin anodizing, but there it is. There it is, blue, cool. There's a... Uh, You guys have seen this before, but there's the, the Warren Thomas Maker Mark. Get a look at that, bring that up. Okay. Alright, the handle length is 3.5 or 3.75 inches from the flat to the tip, or from the tip of the boot to the front uh, tip here, that's four inches. Opening is facilitated via these projections right here. I want to show those off. Projection one, two, and three. This one kind of looks like a shark fin. Uh, on a T-Rex, you can use that to wave out of the pocket. This one, not so much. You see there's a thumb cut out here or a, a finger cut out right there. Um, kind of insinuates that you might open the knife with this part of this hole right here, but that's not really that effective. Okay. Handle scales. Uh, each one of these handle scales is uh, about two millimeters thick, so it's not that thick. It'll flex here at the tip of the boot, but not that much. These chain bolts that hold the thing, the entire knife together, there's two of them. They're very beefy and pro provide plenty of rigidity even though the handle scales are thin. The blade, you can see the blade spine there are a lot thicker at about four millimeters tapering down to a very acute point, which I'll get into when I open it up. The weight is 3.2 ounces, so this is hardly noticeable in the pocket. The way you do want to open this, take your pointer finger here, take your thumb on the other side, 
and get behind that shark fin type projection. So using these two projections, we just lever up. It's kind of a natural motion to open. It's not that difficult at all. Let's look at where we get the rhino name from. Here's a static look. Did you see it? Okay, well, I did. First thing my wife said when she saw this, not knowing anything at all about this knife, was, oh, it looks like a rhino. So, I mean, someone's going to get it. it. Makes sense to me. If you're looking at it from an artistic standpoint, you'll see it. All right, so it is right hand chisel ground. So our grind here on the right side, flat on the left side. The edge is embedded with uh, the tungsten carbide. The tungsten carbide is embedded at such a depth that um, as you cut with it, the tungsten carbide wears away, exposing more carbides, thereby becoming sharper. Um, rumor has it, it'll take two times as long to heal if you're cut by one of these, and it hurts worse than being cut by something that's you know just smooth at the edge. Because this acts like micro serrations. People describe them as pocket chainsaws, these knives with the tungsten carbide edge, so I wouldn't want to find out. But for a self-defense oriented knife, perfect, the way I see it. So you see it has an upswept design, which is good for slicing. It has a very acute point, so it's good for stabbing. All right, Your thumb in a saber grip falls naturally into the shark fin depression here. Your finger goes through the, the hole here, or it can be used to go through the hole, much like uh, the Fred Perrin design, the LeGriff. And this is for retention purposes. So with this level of retention, it would be very difficult, if not impossible, to disarm uh, a knife like this. That's important. Okay, this gentle curve right here, it goes all the way to the tip of the boot. That like that acts like a pinky hook. And as much as you know, you if you stab something with it, or you get this stuck in something, or you need leverage to withdraw it, at least you have something to hold on to. So that's intentional. You can hold it in a, um, a hammer grip, a saber grip, with or without the hole, and it works just fine either way. When it's open, you can use this. Um, shark fin right here. You can use this to pinch between uh, your th the thumb and the shark fin. You can pinch flesh or bony parts, whatever. Uh, it becomes something that you can use to enhance your control methods with a subject. Also in the open position, you can hammer fist using the boot right here. So it's effect effective as an impact weapon in that regard. If you just punch out with it even, you can make contact with the blade edge and the uh, the boot tip projection right there and then cut from there, stab from there, whatever the case may be, whatever the scenario you're in calls for. Um, yeah, it's cool. In the reverse grip, you'll see your thumb falls, or in the ice pick grip, your thumb will fall right into the recess up at the bottom of the boot here using the finger hole reverse grip, still comfortable, no matter which way you hold it, open or closed actually, it's going to be comfortable. Lock bar engagement, early, right at the beginning of the tang of the blade, if you open it slowly it con consistently engages at that point. If you snap open, um, you're going to have the lock bar engage a little further over or more towards the, the middle of the tang of the blade, no big deal. Um, this rides a little awkward in the pocket. It's not a low rider po pocket clip. Um, because it's placed down here beneath the flat, obviously you're going to have some area to contend with that will project out of the pocket and a lot of the trousers that are out there. So let's get into that real quick. Mr. Camera, let's have a little cooperation here. All right. All right, in the pocket, this heel right here is always going to stick out. Uh, that's pretty much unavoidable. 
And I find that wearing this knife more towards the the outer seam, the the outer edge of your pocket is is most effective. If you wear this knife closer to your center line, more of the tail is going to be exposed. It'll be more like this, okay, where the, the entire the entire bottom of the boot area, so to speak, is exposed. And one way or another, if you're sitting down or your right leg needs to rise up, you'll see that this uh, this rises up too, and that can jab you. The boot can come up and jab you. So that's not that's not really that cool. Draw-wise, it draws really awkward. You have to hook your thumb behind the boot, okay? And then what I like to do is let this part, this meaty part of my hand, or my, my palm, that'll grab the heel of the handle, okay? And it just comes out into that grip right there, which is necessary for opening, or is probably most effective for opening. Okay. Oh, I don't like one-handed closing, and it doesn't have a lock bar uh, over travel stop to protect it from overextending the lock bar. So that's my thing. All right. Once again, you can open it, hooking behind, and letting the heel or the palm of your hand catch the heel of the knife's handle. All right. Something we didn't talk about. Okay. If you just start the opening mechanism right here. If you just start opening it, you can flick open or do a snap opening. So if you wanted to get out a little, get it out a little quicker, um, it's still a little bit slower than a conventional folder, but it's an unconventional folder, so it stands to reason there's going to be some quirks. Uh, let's see, what else can we do here? Mentioning different types of things. I find that drawing it out in reverse grip is useful for the impact applications. All right, you can use this point right here at the tip of the boot for, you know, clavicle uh, or clavicular takedowns. Um, you can use the projection right here for hammer fists. Both of those will work really well. But as far as opening the knife in reverse grip, uh, Maybe it's my hands or whatever, but that doesn't seem to work very well. So I'll stick to the, uh, the standard grip coming out of the pocket opening. All right. And as far as using it in that grip goes, projection out of the tip, reverse hammer fist, projection out of the bottom, hammer fist. You can use the recess right here where the boot's at to hook like elbows or arms and aid in arm bars, reverse wrist takedowns, if you know anything about Kubaton or Yawara work. Not getting too far into that, that's something you can study on your own. Um, being an impact weapons instructor, I, I thought a lot about this. I thought a lot about this when I got the knife, you know, how it applies in those applications and it definitely works. If you know any Coupaton or Yawara techniques, or you're familiar with any of the formalized systems that utilize those devices, here you go. Here's your EDC self-defense uh, folder ticket, and the length of it, blade-wise, is you know it's legal in many places. So that's something to consider also as a benefit. There will probably never be a production version of a knife like this, so you're gonna have to get custom. Um, I'm going to say you're going to pay anywhere between four all the way up to six hundred dollars. Uh, if you were to get one of these brand new, it just depends. Used, you're probably looking at four to five. So, or I shouldn't say used, but owned or pre-owned. So, you know, it's not exactly a, a bargain, but if you're looking for something serious, um, you want something different, or maybe you just want to have something artistic you know, not even for defense purposes. It's cool, and I'd definitely consider it. I hope you've all enjoyed this first look at the Warren Thomas Rhino, the first look in video format at least. If there's other videos out there, please somebody link them because um, I, n I never found one, and that leads me to do this video in the first place. So, 
As always, subscribers, random viewers, YouTube world in general, thank you for watching, and have a good one.